Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is my weekly update. I am actually filming this on Halloween. As you can see, of course I had to do it up, right? This is actually hair wax that is colored and I really just piled it in there. Uh, my hair is like, feels like cement now. And of course I have a new mug. I'm a witch before coffee. I got this at my local grocery store. Mm -hmm. And you can't see the rest of my shirt. It says witch and famous. <laughs> yeah, I got that at Target. So, I will be giving out candy tonight with my husband. <sighs> yeah. I like Halloween, I like Halloween stitching, I love horror movies, but the actual giving out the candy and all that, Mm. Now, eating the candy, yeah. Okay, so, what has gone on this week? I'm actually off work today, thank God. So I have filmed like five, four or five different videos. So those will be coming up in the next couple of days. But I have gifts, I have a finish, I have a FFO, I just did it this morning. Purchases and what I am currently starting and working on. And books. I have a couple books to talk about. So, gotta be careful itching my head because you touch this and it's gonna come off on your fingers. Okay. Luckily, this washes right out the next shampoo. But okay. Gifts. First gift I received was from my friend Arlene Grimm. And I just realized I forgot my notes. I'm going to pause so I can go get that because I know I'm gonna forget something if I don't. And I realized I actually stopped the video and didn't pause it. But that doesn't matter. You guys won't notice that because I'll edit that. So before I show you, well, you know what, no. Let's just do it. Okay, so from Arlene Graham who is just tremendously wonderful and sends me something every single week Handmade card, mm-hmm. And she sent me another skein of Color and Cotton Thread Festival. Love that, please, it's purple. Okay, the second gift, ah, you guys are gonna love this because I haven't done this a long time on this channel. Facebook friend Lucy Mitchell sent me a postcard from Taiwan and she sent me a bunch of Taiwan treats to try. So you're going to get a little taste test. Uh-huh. Yeah. Haven't done that in a really long time. So the first thing she sent me was a green tea Kit Kat. Love Kit Kats. So let's break this bad boy open and see what this tastes like. Now I think I may have tried this a long time ago when I received some goodies from Seho or even from... Uh, It's not bad. It definitely tastes like green tea and it's green. You can see that. Okay. Mm. Green tea must be popular in Taiwan. I have a napkin here so I can wipe my fingers before touching fabric. Now these I've been curious to try. Gummy Choco Ball. It says, enjoy delicious milk chocolate with gummy. So maybe it's like a chocolate covered gummy bear? Let's see. It tastes like, oh, it says the flavor is grape. The gummy is grape. Yeah, it tastes like grape. That's actually pretty good. It almost tastes like... <coughs> oh my God. I went down the wrong hole. <coughs> it almost tastes like um, a raisinette. Yeah. Okay, this is gum, so I will try that last. 
She also sent, it looks like dried, ki dried kiwi. I love kiwi. So let's see what this tastes like. Mmm, that's really good. Very, very good. Okay, and then she sent two things of Pocky. I love Pocky. This looks like mango. And then she sent a cookies and cream one. Mm. And that's it besides the gum. So Lucy, thank you so much. You guys know how I love to do taste tests on my channel. Mm. Wow, these buggers are hard to open. And of course I don't have scissors here. Oh, what the hell? Open! Okay, it opened. Here's what it looks like. This is the mango one. Tastes like mango. Mm -hmm. This one's probably gonna be really good. What's your favorite Halloween candy? I like so much different kinds of candy. My favorite, there were sweet tarts. And I made sure to buy some of those. My husband is so ridiculous about candy. He was like, buy extra candy so I can eat some. Because last year, he bought candy. I'm sorry, I bought candy. I put the bags on our dining room table. And then I came in like the next day or the day after and I was like, that's not how I had the bags. So I moved one and all this candy came spilling out. He had opened the bag and put it upside down so I wouldn't know he went in there and ate it. So here's what it looks like. He said, mm. mm -hmm. he said, buy enough candy. Ow, I just stabbed myself in the lip with that. Buy enough candy where we can eat some. Okay. Well, we get a lot of trick-or-treaters. So I bought like $50 worth of candy. Yeah. So, so I made sure to buy a whole thing of sweet tarts. Okay, let's try this gum. It's called Airwaves. Airwaves Super. Not sure what that means, but it looks like it's a grape. Probably the picture down there. So let's say. Having trouble opening this, folks. You probably like, just get to the damn stitch and stop eating. <gasps> oh my god. Ooh, that's too, that's strong. That is some strong. No. Oh my god. Wow. Ooh. You only got to chew that for like a second. Wow, I can. It's like minty like an Altoid. Holy crap. Man, you ever have really bad breath? Or you eat like tuna or an onion? Okay, let's get to the stitch. So Lucy, again, thank you. Loved all of that. Okay, well, let's get to some stitching news first. Let's talk about lock-ins and retreats. The New Jersey Floss Tube Retreat that is being hosted by Arlene and McKenna. I got a spot. I got Yes, so now if you saw my last video, I wasn't keen on going because the first day of the retreat is my birthday. When I told my husband, he said, who gives a F? Go, he said, I've done fishing or gone on a trip on my birthday before. And I thought, all right. He said, we can just consider it your birthday present because what he does is he has a savings account that he puts money in all year and like when it comes to be my birthday or his daughter's birthday, he'll pull money out of that account and buy our birthday presents. So I said, okay, cool. Just consider that my birthday present. So as everyone's been responding to the post that Arlene had put about, do you need a whole hotel room? Are you having a roommate? Blah, blah, blah. So many people are going on Thursday the 17th, which I know is Trisha's birthday, three Al threads. I said, you know what, F it, I'm gonna go on Thursday too. Because what will be nice is to 
drive down. It's only like two hours and 10 minutes from my house. It will be nice to drive there, leave at like noon, get there by three for check-in, be able to get all your stuff checked in, relax. Maybe we can all go to dinner, whoever is there on Thursday, and then be ready first thing Friday morning and have a two full days of stitching, which will be completely awesome. So yeah, my husband doesn't know yet that I'm going Thursday, but he won't be upset. So, okay, there's that retreat. Two weeks before that, so I'm taking off Thursday, Friday, and then the following Monday, because when I come back Sunday, I need a day to decompress. Put all away all my stuff that I bought or whatever, load up my video, because I will do a vlog. Excuse me, dear God. <laughs> I will do a vlog like I did for when I went to the Salty Yarns retreat. I'll film each night in my room, tell you guys what happened and all that. So to get that uploaded and everything. But two weeks before that, I will be going to Ocean City for the Salty Yarns Retreat. And this time I'm going on Thursday and staying until Monday because Thursday, everybody else goes and I never could. I couldn't this year because I had radiation on Friday. So I'll be going on Thursday this year. We have Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'm gonna stay Sunday. It's only an extra $40 a night. That's a no brainer and coming home Monday to avoid all that traffic coming back from the beach. So within a two week span, I'm gonna be going to two retreats. It's gonna be awesome. And yeah, after the year that I've had this year with treatment, I'm gonna to go to as many retreats as I can afford, work-wise, you know, taking off time. Because when I take off, I don't get paid, so. But yeah, so doing that, so that's gonna be very exciting. And I'm actually going to a little retreat in December of this year with the Tangles group in Ocean City. And that is December, I want to say first, second, and third. So it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So that'll be fun. But yeah. Oh, God, my brain. My brain, I'm telling you. So Stephanie, Miss Oso Crafty, the first Sunday of every month, she has always reserved a room at the Fairfax Library in Virginia and invited people who are in that area to stitch. It's hard for me to go on Sundays because of work the next day and it's like an hour and 15 minutes from my house. And it was like at 2.30, so I thought, do I really wanna get home at seven o'clock at night on a Sunday? No. Well, this time it's on a Saturday. It is this Saturday, November 4th, 2.30, Fairfax Library. Um, I'm very excited because Leticia, Crafty Curator, is supposed to go. I will finally meet Miss Oso Crafty herself. Jessie Marie is supposed to go, and Minnie is supposed to go. I mean, there are going to be some people that I either haven't seen in a really long time. I haven't seen Minnie in over a year, before I was even doing floss tube, and I've never met some of the other people, so that's going to be really exciting. Um, I'm actually, you know, kind of nervous going Saturday and then going to the retreat because my friend was like bust out crying when I see these people. And you know, I always thought people that went to like the Beatles concerts or, you know, someone who they really, really loved met a celebrity and just started crying. I thought how ridiculous, how well, no, now I know what they mean because you know, with a lot of these people, a lot of you guys that I have met over the course of this last year, I feel like I've really forged a connection. And to see you in person, it's gonna be like surreal. Like I, I won't be able to believe it. So once we get over that initial, eh, oh my God, it's really you. Hopefully I can calm myself down. <laughs> and not be emotional. Not, not, God, I feel, I feel myself tearing up right now. Um, not be emotional, because I don't, just don't wanna be crying, you know, for 15 minutes when I see everybody. So maybe I should take a Xanax or something, yeah. Okay, and then, you guys have heard me talk about in-stitches before. They used to have lock-ins like three and four times a year. Well, they haven't had one in over a year. I'm pretty sure it was last June, like a year from this past June. They sent an email today. They are having one Sunday, November 12th, from 12.30 to 4.30. It's only $10, and you bring a dish. And what's funny is they'll probably give you that $10 coupon back in your little packet, you get like a welcome packet, we'll probably get $10 off of our, sh our shopping, our order. 
So I texted Jill immediately and was like, holy hell, lock in. Message some other people. So I'm hoping, Minnie, that you can go so I can see you there too. It'd be two weekends in a row I would see you. Yeah, that, that's an awesome, awesome thing. So, doing that. Okay, well, that's a lot of, like, retreats and lock-ins, isn't it? So, my finish. As you saw, if you follow me, follow me. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw my finish of the hands-on design, Sunflower Manor, the smaller autumn design. And I also posted it on Stitch Mania. Well, today I did my canvas and scrapbook finish, and here's how it turned out. Didn't that turn out good? Oh. Now, I kind of wish I would have cut the teal felt a little bit shorter, just a little bit, because I like how this is peeking out, but I love that pop of color. So I think I actually did, you know, a great job on that. This actually went pretty well. I filmed me finishing it, so I'll be putting that up in the next few days so you guys can see that. And I didn't use batting this time, so it's a really tight, you know, smooth finish around the mat board. But yeah, I'm going to hang this right in my office. I already have a spot. So, love that. It turned out so good. So, what have I started? I was going to start that little witch ornament from the 2010 Halloween Just Cross Stitch issue. I started stitching it and I didn't like it. Maybe I'll go back to it because I only did like two lines of it. I didn't even do that much of it. But what I decided to start is something that I've had on the burner for a long time. This. You guys know how much I love this. This is from this year's Just Cross Stitch Halloween special issue. This is Glendon Place, A Haunting Household. Now, the original fabric I was going to use for it was hand-dyed fabrics by Stephanie's Kaleidoscope. But I decided, because here's why I love this. I mean, look at all of the colors. Look at all these bright colors. Yeah, are you kidding? So, and I did a tiny bit. I stitched last night, and then I did a Stitch With Me video today. I decided to use, and yes, I put it on scroll rods. I wanted some on my scroll rods again. So the fabric is Bewitched by Fiberlicious, and it's 28 Count Lugana. And that, I start in the middle, so that's the S and the T, and the start of the E in the word monsters. The needle minders, I bought that Haunted House one at Silk Weaver when I was there a couple weeks ago. And the pumpkin, I'm pretty sure I got from Gina's Unique Boutique. The reason why I had two on this project is because the pattern is long. So I put the pattern on the fabric when I'm stitching. So yeah, that's my small start. So that's going to take, this is going to take me a while to finish because, I mean, you can see how big it is. The only substitution I made was the floss for the moon. They call for DMC color variations in daffodil fields. I already had Gentle Art Sampler Threads daffodils, so I am just going to use that for that. But I think this is going to stitch up so great. And I'm going to be honest. I find myself gravitating towards patterns that are easy for me to follow. Like... Um, I don't want to show the pattern, but I'm going to hold it way back here. See how, I don't know if you can see it, but see how it's just, you know, the letters are easy to follow. It's whole stitches. It's not a lot of back stitch. There's no over one. I just, my brain, my brain these days, I just need easier. And if a pattern is also too small, I won't stitch it. No, uh-uh. So, yeah, I'm being really picky now. Ooh, there's the mailman. I wonder if I got any goodies in there. I haven't ordered anything, so no. Yeah, no, he was there too quick. I probably got nothing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really picky now with what I've been buying pattern-wise and what I'm going to stitch. Do I really love it, first of all? Can I see it? Is it going to be easy on my brain and not a headache? 
So, when I go Saturday to the Fairfax Library and when I go the following week, I don't want to lug my scroll rods. They're too hard to hold my hands. So I said, okay, what can I start that's small enough to fit in a Q-snap? I am going to start this one. Yeah, love this one. And it will give me a chance down the road as I stitch this. These are Algerian eyelet stitches. I will do another tutorial. A lot of you guys like my tutorial on the Smyrna cross stitch, so I will do a tutorial on that. Now, this is being stitched, though, on 36 count fabric, and I'm going to be stitching mine on 28 count. They say, obviously, when you do the Smyrna, uh, the Smyrna, Smyrna, Jesus, <laughs> the Algerian eyelet to use only one strand. I don't know if I'll be able to do that. I'm pretty sure I'll still be able to do it on 28 count. That shouldn't matter. But what am I going to use as far as threads and fabric? So I picked what stuff I already had. I'm actually going to use this piece. This is a Silk Weaver Solo Ada, 14 count Ada. I figure Ada is nice and easy to work on. But yeah, I'm going to use this. And so for the black, what were the threads? Let's see. The threads were all week's dye works, onyx, grits, pewter, and dolphin. Now onyx is black. That's for her whole dress. I'm going to use uh, Crescent Colors Black Coffee because I already have it. And for her skin, which was grits, I'm actually going to use Gentle Art Sampler Threads Chalk because I already had it. The letters around her were done in pewter. I'm going to use Color and Cotton Hearth, which is like a gray purpley color. And then for her hair, they did her hair in like a gray color. I'm pretty sure it was the dolphin. I'm actually going to use Color and Cotton Maritime, where I'm going to make her hair teal. So all of these colors up against this are actually going to look really good. So yeah, I'm going to be starting that on Saturday at Fairfax Library. Okay, that's all the stitching that I've done this week, unfortunately. I really wish I could do more. I just work and yeah, you know what it is. So what did I buy this week? I did get a couple things, not too much. I did get my first color and cotton fabric of the month. I really wanted to try it. It doesn't disappoint. I requested the bright and colorful fabric and I requested also Lugana 28 count and I got a fat eighth, which is 13 by 18. So it comes packaged like this. And my fabric is Holiday Mint. I love this. Now it's, you know, not, it's pretty solid. I like it though. It's different. You know, it's different for me because usually I'm like the crazy colors and everything. But yeah, so love that. Then I placed an order with Down Sunshine Lane for a couple of the hands-on designed a year in chalk. I really want to try stitching these on that Fiberlicious chalkboard fabric. And I'm really tempted to, now here, I'll just show you the ones I got first. I got the one for October, because please, are you kidding? I don't know how I didn't have any of these. Like, I didn't buy them when they came out. I got the one for November, because love that. Yeah. And then I got the one for December. Yeah. So, I would love to stitch all of these individually, like all 12 months. Do the canvas finish individually and then hang them all together. I don't know the size. What's the size of these? 49 by 70. Okay. It would be really awesome to finish them all, you know, individually on the canvas with the scrapbook paper and hang them all together. I'm still thinking about that though how I want to do that because it would look really different because each one would have its own different paper. Yeah. Would love to find a way to do all 12. I'm guessing the only way to do that, wow, that would probably cost quite a bit of money 
To do all 12, first of all, you would need a giant ass piece of fabric. But space them enough where you could get them matted around each one. Yeah. That would be really cool though, wouldn't it? Yeah. So still thinking about what I want to do with that. And my last purchase was from Lakeside Needlecraft. I purchased the hard copy, the fabric, and the needle minder of their spooky Halloween cell. Um, I've seen so many of you finishing this. Love this. Are you kidding me? And I really wanted the fabric because I wanted to see what their fabric looked like. This only calls for like four colors. And I have the Weeks Dye Works colors already for the green and the yellow and the white. And then it's black. So there's that. Here's the needle minder. Yeah. Very cool. And then here is the fabric. You know, pre-cut. And it says even weave 28 count. I'm pretty sure this is Lugana because that's what it looks like. But here's the fabric. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Now, I don't know when I'll get to stitching that, but that came pretty quickly too. So that's all that I purchased. And, oh no, I bought one more thing. I bought something to organize my patterns. I have been cleaning out patterns, weeding out patterns. I wanted something portable in case I wanted to take it with me. My mom had this accordion file box purse looking thing that she's been keeping all of my grandfather's hospital records in. And I was like, where did you get that? Well, hers is black, but look at this. I found one on Amazon purple. Now this was like 30 bucks, but it's really sturdy. I mean, this is hard and you have this and the two straps, of course. But inside, I'm trying to, inside there are accordion dividers. I have all my magazines back here because there's like a hard partition. But they give you like cardboard things. And I wrote, you can see Halloween, Christmas, fall, spring, summer, mermaid, coffee. Yeah, and I've organized all my patterns in that. Oh my God, I love that. Totally love that. Okay. As I'm trying to hook that. All right, the last thing I wanna talk about is books. Last week I finished a book called Best Day Ever. And here is the front cover of it. I read this book in two days, folks. I couldn't stop reading it. The premise. Paul has the perfect life, a glittering career as an advertising executive, a beautiful wife, two healthy boys, and a big house. And he's the perfect husband, breadwinner, protector, provider. He has planned a romantic weekend for him and his wife at their lake house, and he's promised today will be the best day ever when they go. But as they start to drive, now most of the, of the book is the trip there. There's an underlying current of menace. Something is off about the husband. You get that right from the get-go. Like he's a wacko. Oh my God. Oh my holy God. What happens? It was so good. I highly recommend if you like those kinds of suspense mystery books. And this just goes to show you, you really truly do not ever know someone. Yeah. So I finished reading that and then I was like, okay, what next? I started reading this. Oh, the author of that book is Kyra Ruda. I guess that's how you pronounce that. Dangerous Boys by Abigail Haas. Now, the premise of this, two guys and a girl, they become friends. Three says three teens venture into an abandoned lake house one night. Hours later, only two emerge from the burning wreckage. So there must be a fire. The girl drags one brother. So it's two brothers and a girl. The girl drags one brother to safety. The other is left to burn dead in the fire. But which one survives? Was the death an accident? Was it murder? The book, and I like how they do it. The book will go from present to past 
to past, to present, to past. So you have to really pay attention, but I like those kinds of books because the chapters are not too long. So that is really good. I'm only like 15% through that. But the reason why I am reading this is because last year, and this is one of my top five books, I read this by the same author called Dangerous Girls. Holy hell. So what this book is about, it's spring break of senior year. A bunch of high school friends go to Aruba. One of the girls gets murdered. Well, is it murder? Is it an accident? Another of the girls that's on the trip, she gets uh, accused of the murder. And then there's a trial and everything. It was an awesome book. And you do not know until the very last page of the book what truly happened. Mouth hanging open. Mm hmm Yeah. Because all along you think, no, she didn't. Yes, she did. No, she didn't do it. Yes, she did it. No, you're, you wind up accusing every single person. Oh my God, it was so good. Yeah, very well-written young adult book. But yeah, so that's why I'm reading The Dangerous Boys. So that's it for me, folks. I hope you guys are all having a great week and that you have a great Halloween. You will see this video after Halloween because I, I don't know when I'm putting it up. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you for watching and subscribing and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.